In this example, I want to go through uh, first in, first out using uh, this particular question. You have uh, Sherlock Holmes with sales, and these are the number of units, and this is the sales price. And they had purchased 300 units at $20 a piece. That's the cost of those goods that they purchased. And prior, they had um, ended last accounting period or began this accounting period with 100 un 150 units at 16. So starting that uh, with that layer, if you will, or if you want to look at it as a shelf of goods, in our beginning inventory on the debit side, debit what you get, they had gotten 150 units at 16 apiece. So they had 2,400 in beginning inventory. I don't know in this example whether they still owe for those goods or not, but we'll just put it there as a, a way of balancing, if you will. Now, what they did next, we'll put the uh, 300, 300 units that they purchased at $20 a piece. 300 units times the cost, prices went up, 20 bucks. So this company has $8,400 of goods available to sell now for the sale. They're selling 400 units. Uh, we'll assume all of these are on account. That's typically how businesses uh, record their sales. And it would be the 400 units times the price of $35 a piece. That is what they are promised to receive. Now if it wasn't on account it would be to cash. The other side is a credit to sales. So you, um, you're getting accounts receivable, the corresponding credit is sales or sales revenue. As far as the um, cost of our sales, we are selling 400 units. The question is which 400 are we assuming we're selling? Well we're using first in first out so we're assuming we're going to sell from this layer first and once we've depleted that or sold all those off then we're going to go to the next layer. So what we're going to sell is all 150 of the $16 goods. So here's our cost of goods sold out the door. 150 units at $16. Now we also though have to now um, get another 150 or uh, excuse me uh, 250 which is the 400 uh, units purchased minus the 150 that we already took from that layer, um, sorry, that layer uh, from beginning inventory. And those are at 20 bu bucks a piece. So 7,400 is our cost of goods sold. So again, all 2,400 of, of uh, the beginning inventory gone out the door. The rest of the 400 that we sold um, is the 250 at 20 bucks. So our entry is debit cost of goods sold. What's left are the, now there's two ways you can do it. You take the sum of your debits minus the sum of your credits. I'm just going to click on that. We have a thousand units or a thousand dollars left in ending inventory. But you can look at it as being also equal to, we had um, the 300 units, but from that we took um, 250. So we have 150 units left, sorry, 150 units left, and those are at a cost of 20 bucks. And there's your thousand, just to make sure you're math works. Again, all these goods you had available to sell, 2,400 plus 6 or 8,400 can only be in one of two places. They've either gone out the door as cost of goods sold or they're still around. This ending inventory will become next period's beginning inventory. Now this question asks for gross profit. Because there's a number of ways or a number of different questions you might be asked. In the case of gross profit, gross profit that is equal to your um, sales, let's do it this way, $14,000 of sales minus your cost of your goods sold. Oops. 
and that equals 14,000 minus your 7,400 or 6,600. And that would be the answer to this particular question. But you could have easily been asked, what is your cost of goods sold on your income statement? That would be 2,400. You could be asked, what is your inventory on your balance sheet um, at the end of the accounting period, which is 7,000. And that's it.